Hello folks. Today we're going to be looking at some non-inverting amplifier simulations for our op amp circuits. So I've built a little circuit here and we've got a fairly standard 741 op amp here plus and minus 15 volt power supplies, 20k ohm load and for the feedback network RF is 10k and RI is 2k. The input is a 1 kilohertz sine wave at 100 millivolts. We can verify that. All right, there's our sine wave. 100 millivolts, 1 kilohertz. Okay. The gain we should get would be RF over RI plus 1. So 10K over 2K is 5, plus 1 is 6. If we have 100 millivolts coming in, we should get six times that or 600 millivolts across the load. And the phase shift here should ideally be zero. Right? It's a non-inverting amplifier. So what we have here as far as phase is what we see over here. Additionally, at the inverting input, we should see virtually whatever the input is. In other words, we should see just about 100 millivolts here. Remember, the error voltage, the differential input voltage with negative feedback should be very, 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 very small. Okay, um, given the fact that at one kilohertz, this thing probably has tens of thousands for a gain, um, that feedback factor is going to force that differential voltage down to virtually zero. Okay, so let's run a simulation now. We could do a transient sim on here, but uh, it'll actually be quicker if we just do an AC analysis and get a table of AC results. Okay, so let's identify a few things, right? Three was our input, so there's our 100 millivolts. And this, oddly, is showing a 3.5 femto degree phase shift. Okay, we can ignore that. It's 100 millivolts, and we'll just say it's zero degrees. Now, we get over to the output, four, and we got 599.98 millivolts, right? The 600 millivolts that we expected. And we have a phase shift measured in milli degrees, 347 milli degrees, so virtually zero. And then if we go over and look at the uh, inverting input, there we go, 100 millivolts. In other words, the input pretty much as expected. Right. Beautiful. All right, so to prove the point, let's go up and uh, increase the value of this resistor. So we go from 10K to 20K. Well, that should give us a gain of 11, right? 20K over 2K, that's 10 plus 1. There's a gain of 11. So I should see 1.1 volts coming out over here at the load. And if we look at pin 4, sure enough, 1.1. Again, fraction of a degree of phase shift nothing of any consequence there's our 100 millivolts input um, our inverting input as you can see virtually the 100 millivolts just a tiny little piece notice we're just under the 100 millivolts higher gain means less sacrifice factor so this thing will start to move off of the ideal zero we'll start to actually notice it but i mean really that's 10 microvolts off of the original 100 millivolts so that's also looking pretty good, right? All right, now the next thing we can do is consider, well, first let me bring this back to our original value. We could, we could consider what happens with a different op amp. All right, so we can come in here and change the style, the, the manufacturer's op amp. All right, I'm going to grab a, um, a TL081. This is a BiFET op amp. It has a JFET differential amplifier. It is a faster op amp than the 741. It has many characteristics that are improved over a 741. It is certainly by no means, you know, the end all, but it, it's, uh, you know, it originated in, in the uh, uh, late 70s. So it's, it's an improvement in some respects. Uh, there are some characteristics that aren't quite as good, but for our purposes, you know, it's still a very high gain um, let's see what happens with the gain. You know, back here with the gain with the um, RF of 10K, our, our gain should be six again. We should get 600 millivolts. 
So let's find out. Looking at pin four. Sure enough, there you go. There's your 600 millivolts. All right. Again, tiny, tiny little phase shift. All right. And if we look at, uh, you know, pin five, again, virtually 100 millivolts. All right. Beautiful. Okay. So we can try this with other op amps. Now you can go through this list and, and uh, you know, grab different devices. 318 is a very fast op amp compared to these. But let's return back to our 741. Let's do a transient analysis. First, we're going to add an output meter. We'll call this the load. How inventive. And now we'll do a transient analysis. This is a nice sort of cross check. I'm going to run this from two milliseconds to four milliseconds. Since this is a one kilohertz source, this will give us two cycles and we'll sort of start it part way through. So if there's any initial transient, we don't have to worry about that. All right. We can see immediately that these things are in phase, right? There's your nice zero cross beautifully. There's your 600 millivolt peak, your 100 millivolt coming in. Now you could verify this with our legend, right? So the maroonish thing is V load, the green one is the source. Everything looks beautiful. 